So welcome to the studio. I'm really excited to have Johnny here. John, I met Johnny how long ago? Probably about it's probably five. been seven, seven or eight months. Seven or yeah. eight months ago. Yeah. And you signed up for a class here. So. Signed up for a class. And tell us just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, working dad by day. Um, earlier this year, had a goal to get back into art. It had been, boy, 20 years since I had really gotten myself back into art and drawing. And yeah, saw the class being offered here and decided I would sign up to hold myself accountable and got into some charcoal and animal wildlife drawing. And it just seems like things have kind of taken off since then. And, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, I draw, draw on the evenings and weekends, awesome. working during the day, but um, yeah, it's been exciting. That's awesome. And your art is beautiful. You do such Thank a good you. job. And I just love following you and love to see your artwork. And you, you are so talented. So I'm really excited because I asked him to come and show me his methods. So you're going to you're gonna do the teaching here. So yeah. We'll let you just take it from okay. here. So I'm ready to go. I got gloves on. You said it's messy. It Great is messy. I put my hair in a clip. So. This is more prepared than I usually am at home. <laughs> usually my hands are covered in black. Um, the other thing I, you know, people ask online um, where I went to art school or did anything, all of these methods are just from trial and error. Yeah. So there's, there probably are different or better ways. There's probably fancy art terminology that you're supposed to use, but I don't know those. I'm just right. well, someone that just tried it out and these That's are things great. that have worked for me. So. That's perfect. So I did um, choose, I thought this would be a fun image of a gorilla. Okay. As you can see, it's black and white. Um, usually when I'm trying to pick an image to draw, I really like to see the dark darks, really dark, and then somewhere in the picture, a bright light or bright whites. So yeah, you got some great contrast. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So high contrast. So I, I'm excited. I think this one will be fun. Um, so the, the way I approach this is the first thing I want to do. Um, I think of it as macro to micro. Okay. So I just want to kind of put on here some big blocks of shading where the darks are. Okay. Um, so we're going to get a sponge. Okay. Just a good old fashioned kitchen sponge here. All right. Let's and, go around. Through yep. Here. We've gonna... got some just willow. I'm sure we could add in the notes somewhere. Um, what we're using. What yeah. we're using. Yeah. But we've just got kind of a willow charcoal. So we'll just so you start the with the side? big blocks. Yeah. You can okay. do the flash. I mean, anything. Probably both. Yep. Okay. And here's the thing I love about charcoal is there's not a lot of pressure for me when I'm starting because I can always erase and modify yeah. and move it around. Yeah. So it's this part, up. yeah, the, this first part is really fun because intentionally you want to be just loose mm -hmm. and not, don't feel pressure, yeah. just mess. And if you mess up, that's okay because we can erase it up. Okay. So looking at the gorilla, I'm seeing he's got a couple spots probably for his eyes. You see a little brow above, right? So it's going to come down and then it's probably going to be darker in here, right? So again, I'm not terribly worried about being super okay. exact, but we're just going to go in and I'm gonna just kind of put in the blocks. See what you're doing here. So we don't care how black it is right now. Just I mean, we're not worried about being You're as not, black as it is. Not as, as yeah. Okay. Not, in fact, a little bit lighter is better. Okay. And we may end it out, but that is, that's, I can't tell. Yours is looking actually kind of dark. Is it? It'll still, it'll still work though. It looks as dark as yours. Does it? Okay. Maybe. You're better. You're, you probably have a better. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at all that black stuff dropping down there. Is your office just like covered? My up? office is just covered, and it's I've got to I've got to figure something out. <laughs> but it's so fun that I like. It's worth it. I, I can't I, at least not yet. I can't go into other methods quite yet. I feel like there's so much to master in this still. Uh huh. So, so what paper are we using? So this is a, a Strathmore charcoal paper. Um, I want to say it's probably mid-grade. It's not the nicest. It's also not necessarily the cheapest. Okay. So it's there. a charcoal paper. Uh-huh. It is a charcoal paper. And what I've found for them is that they'll, they tend to erase a little bit better than maybe a regular 
And that's why you were saying, don't go too dark because we're going to be lifting out. Yeah, you can, and if you do, it's fine. That's what I love about it. If you do, we'll, we'll work through it. Okay. Seems like this head gets a little bit darker up there. So, here. I'm just adding some more value to it. Just a little bit. And there's a part of me that also just, I do want, the fun part when you lift it out is I do want everything, for the most part, to cover at least with some. So tell me what this part is right here. Is that his chin, this light part? Is so chin? that's going to be his chin, okay. so I know I can kind of go darker underneath there because it's going to okay. kind of blend in. Yeah. yeah, as I'm looking here, this is almost probably the darkest yeah, right, spot right, of the thing. And again, we're not getting to the darkest point right now, but right it's kind of giving us a good loose baseline. Well, yours looks better already. Oh, no, <laughs> that looks great. Mine's, so I got really bright white, so should I just kind of... You, yeah, I, just kind of smooth you can't judge it. That's great. I think that's a great way. Okay. Sometimes for me totally too, yellow. it's it's like the artistic part of it is kind of fun. You have a little bit different texture, mm -hmm. whether you're using the same sponge, your hands, or other things. So I do like kind of playing around with that as well. Okay. All right. So we may not have time today, but I towards the end I would definitely come in and darken this edges really dark. Okay. Just so that this again the grill in the middle is the. So basically what we're doing is killing the white so that we don't Killing have the, the white, white. I like yeah. that. We don't have the white throwing us off on our values. Yep. Okay. All right. So it feels like roughly I've got the baseline yet. How are you feeling about yours? Oh, so, I'm not sure, but... <laughs> I think it looks good. <laughs> so you've got, like, I, I'm... I'm Kind of in my mind, making sure, okay, he's got that shoulder that's going to end up being kind of shiny there. Yeah. The ears a little bit dark. Maybe, maybe a little dark and a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's I haven't uh, drawn with a, a round sponge before. Yeah, so okay. It's a new experience. People are like, what? Where did you get that sponge? I'm like, <laughs> It's like a $2 sponge in either art supply or you can get it at the grocery store. Works good. So there's probably other sponges you could use as well. Okay, so now what are you using? So I'm still... Are you just using it and just... Yep. And again, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not... I almost think you draw better when you're not worried about it. Like yeah. if it doesn't look perfect. So I'm so just, you're just, basically I'm just looking at like, okay, I know his, yeah, I know his nose is going to be in there. With those kind of two dark nostrils, nostrils, nostrils. You know, nostrils. People see nostrils. <laughs> okay. But look, it's like kind of fun already, right? Yeah. It's like, like he's coming out of the mist. He could walk away right now, and like I think that would like, that would actually be really cool. Bigfoot or something. Oh, followers <laughs> will love that. I don't know if you've been following, but I'm I'm uh, eagerly <laughs> anticipating my first Bigfoot commission. Ah. Fun. Nobody's. I don't know why, but nobody's commissioned me to draw Bigfoot. Not yet. But that's. For my my long time followers and knew it's kind of a running joke. Yeah. When when am I gonna get my when am I gonna get my first bigfoot commission? So I've noticed on the sponge too, if you put it on light, it actually goes on darker. Okay. And then you'll notice if you go over it, then it, will lift it starts to lift out okay. a little bit. And this is really for me now that I've got that base in. I'm gonna just try to start putting in some of these structures a little bit more. Okay. All right, so we're just kind of working on the shape of the jaw, yep. basically. Okay. Trying the jaw out. But it's kind of interesting, because the, since the jaw is light, you're actually putting value around the outside edge. Maybe come forward. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then you can see, if I look at up here, I'm noticing the lightest parts where I probably could have left you know, we could have left this a little lighter. Right here. And that's okay. That's fine. Because we can lift but, it back out. Yeah, we can lift it back out. But like, I'm noticing, like, okay, I want to make sure we lift that out. But his eyes, I'm feeling like we're 
I kind of did eyes. Maybe his ear will remind myself is to not forget about that. Ooh, just noticing this other ear. I almost didn't catch that other ear. See how dark oh, yeah, I didn't even is. see it. You had to point that out. Okay. Well, that's chosen, right? You're like, we're just loose and free and kind of. So basically, it's just, you're, we're just starting with the basic shapes we see. We're not even looking at it as a gorilla. We're looking at shapes. Yeah, I like that. I'm not. It kind of, you could say it kind of starts looking like a gorilla, but you're right. I'm just more worried about, am I generally getting close to the, are the darks generally dark in the same spots? Mm -hmm. And the lights generally light. Do you tend to want to blow on it? Yes. <laughs> and if I was at home, I would, but I don't want to, not yet, at least make too big of a mess of your studio. Okay. I got to get here and here. Let's see, I'm gonna angle a little bit. So I'm feeling like I'm getting pretty close to okay. jaw, jaw here. Yeah, just look and see if you're feeling like so the other thing I'm part of this is just to remind me is like Where that bottom are. lip. And so I'm, this is your bottom lip. Yeah. So see that light? Yeah, so that's and I'm cool. looking here and I'm like, you know what? I can't tell if I need to bring it up just, just a little bit more. Yeah. That's kind of what I was wondering. This Why? is kind of where I'm trying to... I think I've seen you talk about using the negative space. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite thing. If you can look at the space around the object, it'll help you get your portion, proportions right. But there's so much black there that you... Uh, and you've got a lot of negative space that's all kind of mingled together there. So. Yeah. But I like how you said it's, you know, you're not, you're not trying, I'm not trying to make it look like a gorilla or, or a mouth. I'm just looking at what are the shapes in between. Yeah. What are the shapes you see? And, and then the object will emerge once we get. Yep. All this other stuff in there. Yeah, in fact, if I focus too much on like, oh, this doesn't look like a gorilla yet, it just will demotivate me to yeah. continue. Or I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna. So if I'm rubbing on this and it kind of lifts up, how do I get it darker? How am I? You're just gonna go back in and reapply it a little lighter. Doing more okay. layers. Yeah, and I love that's what I love about this though is especially for a freehand method like this, you, you're never really. No matter how off I feel like I am, I mean, I've been three quarters of the way through and I'm like, I've got to move this entire mouth. Uh -huh. And you can chuckle. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. How are you feeling? Mm, so far so good. It just kind of crumbles off. So I'm, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, so you can, head. like this build up, I'd say you can either, you could blow on it if you need stuff. That's okay, we have a vacuum. Um, but you'll want to get where you don't have anything hanging on the paper. So you don't want crumbs hanging there? No, because what will happen, it'll either fall on your whites and cover them up, mm -hmm. or you're going to accidentally hit it with a brush or something and it's going to smudge. It's going to smudge, okay. So to keep it dark, again, I'm, I'm usually lighter, but I am covering it off. And we're both using different brands of, of charcoal, so yeah. this is interesting. I'm not sure. Yeah, how much is the what's the differences on the brand. charcoal as well, but is it looking pretty close to yours? I think so. But yeah, if you want to maybe blow your I think you'll make a mess of your studio that one. Better than you didn't use that what you're saying? Kind of. <laughs> White walls. So Alright. Okay. So there's two ways, I, I, and it honestly depends on the picture, there's usually two kind of ways I go at this point. Okay. One is we can add in more darks with a darker charcoal. Okay. Um, or we can lift out the lights. And I'm thinking with this guy, um, I want to lift out okay. the lights. So I'm going to get just a kneaded eraser. Kneaded eraser, honestly any eraser can do. The reason I like the kneaded eraser is I feel like I can apply a slightly different pressure. And you can shape it. You can shape it. You can make it small yeah. and pointy if you want. Um, 
So there's not a rule working light to dark or dark to light, or you just start with the mid value. Start with the mid value. One direction or the other. Yep. And it probably depends on what I think there's more of. Like this guy, the, the thing I'm most concerned about on a piece like this is going to be the eyes. Okay. Yeah. If you get the eyes well on most animals, but if you get the eyes the right shapes and values, then everything else you can almost. Yeah, you can touch a little bit. Yeah. Okay. But if the eyes. Yeah, are the too eyes far are going apart, to the soul. Then that's it. Then, 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 then it's gone. So, okay. so, but I want to start on his eyes though, like the eyeballs, but I do think that brow. So, looking at the brow, looking at the nose, that mouth. I'm thinking we can maybe start there. Okay. The other thing I think he did a good job on that I'm going to need to make some adjustments on is I almost drew him straight on profile, but actually, if you look, he's a little bit. Popped his head a little He's sideways. a little bit tilted. Okay. So, again, I'm just coming in here. And because of the fur, what's really cool is without really even trying, as I'm erasing I'm, I'm starting at one side yep and coming to the other instead of just holding it down going back and forth almost putting the first texture in. yeah and it looks I mean you don't it's crazy you, it's I don't know how to say this but it looks like you're better at art than maybe you are is how I feel I'm like wow I'm just erasing well, I like, like I'm making I'm making <laughs> fur yeah it already looks it already looks furry yeah that's so, cool okay that's fun. And I can see And again, you might erase too much and then you can come back in and. Yeah. A little bit of dark thing. So what, um, what mediums do you enjoy, Susie? I, I love um, oil paints. I love oil paints. And um, watercolor and I, I love portrait drawing. So, but. Um, Color pencil was basically the first thing I learned. So okay. Got a little, you know, special, special spot place my for, that, for that, just because that's where I decided to start. You know. So but, your story though, is you drew, growing up, growing up. Yeah, I drew, my mom was one of those people that just helped you do any and all things creative. So we did everything creative. I. I painted windows in our living room window. I painted for Christmas and um, painted a few restaurant windows growing up. But um, my story is kind of uh, kind of interesting because I I never felt like I was like an amazing artist, but I thought I was pretty good. But um, I had an uh, experience in high school that kind of left me thinking, "Ah, eh, art's not for you. You can't do this." Oh no! So. Um, so when I was in high school, I decided to take an art, an art class, and, and it was an oil painting class. And uh, I was painting this, um, this picture, just sitting at my easel painting, and the teacher came up to me, everybody was around, and he's like, Susie, you have no artistic ability. Mm. You will never get anywhere with art. So I suggest you drop out, because I'm going to most likely fail you. So I just remember feeling so devastated, it was just kind of like, Someone just stomped me to the ground, you know, and humiliated besides that, so. Well, especially at that age. Yeah. And coming from an art teacher. Yeah. It's one thing if it's like a sibling, you know, my brother's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of like, yeah, whatever. How <laughs> and a teacher. Yeah. So you you left that feeling devastated. And yeah, so I left over. class and I just, you know, cried and sobbed and I was so embarrassed and humiliated. But I love, still love to draw and I find myself drawing still, but I, I actually, without realizing it, I realized that what he had said to me went straight to my brain and I just kept on that I have no artistic ability. So mm. whenever I was drawing anything, if somebody walked in the room, I completely covered oh, real quick oh, so no. nobody could see it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so um, I've had to, it took me years to learn how to, you know, you can't let someone else tell you what you can and can't do. Yeah. And look at you now. Yeah, you've got it's a so driving fun. studio. You've helped hundreds of people, well, probably and, thousands. Well, it's it's fun, and it's uh, my passion is to help people who maybe have gone through something similar than you know to me, or yeah. put it aside like you. Yeah. After twenty years, you're like, I want to get back into it. And I think it's so powerful to see what art can do for you in your yeah. life and how much it enriches your life. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's funny I've noticed. As I've gotten back into it, just little things, whether we're outside 
you know, if we're on a hike, like I'm being more mindful of the things around me and noticing the little things, whether it's the, the bugs or the way a rock is sitting, things that have been there all along, but you're, Just, there's something, you know, even like looking at these animals, I, I tend to draw a lot of animals and um, like, I'm like, like coming, I was just like, how cool that we have technology that gives us this picture. Yeah. That, that allows 200 us to... years ago, I wouldn't have been able to draw a gorilla because I wouldn't have known what they look like. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like finding myself grateful for these little things that just weren't a part of my life before. So. Well, and even something simple as, you know, driving down the road and looking at the sunset. Yeah. Or the sky or the shapes of the clouds or yeah. all those kinds of things. You just look through different eyes, I yeah. think. Yeah it's, yeah, it's neat. That's really That's good. Cool. Awesome. All right, so okay. I kind of started. So that look at that. It's like he's got hair there. Like, yeah, it's, that's cool. it does. It does. Um, so you're working. So together. I'm. It's funny. Sometimes I I want to go right to what I think is going to be the hardest part, and sometimes I wait until the up. end. <laughs> so I'm kind of finding myself wanting to come under these so these eyes. The little kind of swoops underneath there. Okay. You'll notice it's pretty sharp contrast between light and dark. Uh -huh. So if these are a little bit thicker than I want, that's okay because I can come back in later and Lifting. and 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 make them a little thinner. Oh, a little brighter. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I'm gonna just slowly. I'm like now. This is the first time I'm. You know, I'm feeling a little bit of nervousness. It was easy, free flowing before. <laughs> Now I'm like, you know, I want to... Well, now you know how I feel. I'm, I'm yeah, following you're, you're doing okay. awesome. You are doing awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. And look, I, this is... I've never drawn a gorilla. Okay. And I might sound like I have more of a process than I actually do. A lot of time I'm just winging it. Well, you know that saying, fake it till you make it, so... But I think, you, like, the more you do this and the more artists I talk to is... How similar everybody feels about their work. They're very self-conscious about it. I think you're, you know, you're very right. You know, other people like it, and I think because we're creators, you we're always kind of pushing the envelope of what you want to try. So you're never actually always. You've in never a spot. arrived at your yeah. you know, way to do it. And it's always something new to try. That's for sure. I like that, the shapes under the eyes. I think that's adding a lot. Okay. Right there. Are you doing? I'm very nervous. I just did his bottom eyelid. I'll have to stand back here in a minute. See if you got it in the right spot How there. I feel about it. It's tricky to get the eyes the right size. Size and reflection. And, and honestly, that one, I, I, will, I will spend extra time on and not because that's your focal point that's and that's, focal that's point. what makes that whole picture is the yeah. eyes. So I know we're we're having fun and working through this, but I kind of, you know, when you're really putting a project together, you're going to, you're going to take extra time there. Yeah. So that's looking closer. So what is, what would you say is your favorite tool for working with charcoal? Ooh, my favorite tool, I really love. I, so the brushes are a new thing for me to try. Okay. So I was using the stick mm -hmm. and then trying to blend it a lot with my finger. And someone talked about trying um, brushes just, and I've tried watercolor foil. Uh, it's funny. Something a little stiffer. I, I, I went and bought this Mac brush, which is not a cheap brush. But I love this thing. I love. Let me feel. Is it soft? So it's it? like okay. it's pretty it's soft. soft, but it yeah. It so does hold its form really. It holds its form. So watch. It's like, and and look, you don't need these to to be successful, but you know it it, it brings you in. Fly. And look, look it's almost shoulder. pushing out and making that. Do you see how it's almost yeah. making the making the outside lighter? It's wow. like it's almost like I'm like I said. It's making it look like I'm better than I am. <laughs> it's just doing, it's just doing the work for me. That's so cool. So yeah. that's a slightly darker charcoal. So I gotta go get some, oh yeah, you're using a different charcoal now. So this is a darker charcoal. So the brushes for me have been a lot of fun because I think I've had this for maybe a week and I'm just learning. Okay, so you're just playing with it I'm still. just learning how it, how it works. 
What? Makeup brushes, is that? I wouldn't have thought I would have said that <laughs> seven months ago. That would be. Yeah, I know this time you get yourself a makeup brush. Well, while we're drawing, tell me a little bit about your, your story. Yeah, so I grew up, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it, there's this, I believe there's a lost generation of artists. Mm -hmm. And that would be people like myself who we drew before there was social media, uh -huh. before the internet, and you drew for fun. Yeah. You drew in your room, in the living room, and it was just for you, and you tuck your sketchbook away. So I did that. I spent I spent a lot of time on my own just just drawing. Um, grew up, got married, kids, school, and you know, I, I don't want to say like I gave up art, but it just wasn't a priority. Just got put on the yeah, sidelines. Yeah, just got put on the sidelines. Yeah. And so um, it's funny, almost every, about this time of year, December, January, I'd say, okay, next year, I'm going to start drawing again. Is that your New Year's resolution? It was my New Year's resolution <laughs> for like 20 years. And it just, it never worked out and it's always, there's always something else and, or maybe I'd kind of start to doodle and it looked like, in my mind, it looked really bad. So this year, for whatever reason, I made the New Year's resolution, I just told myself, I'm just going to sketch, even if it's ugly, I don't care. And I'm going to just post it to my personal kind of social media account. Mm -hmm. So I did, I started sketching little doodles. It was mostly people. And, uh, I realized I thought, you know, I don't think my friends and family care a whole lot about me posting my sketches every day. I better set up a separate page. That way, if they want to see my sketches, they can. Yeah. So you set up an, an art account? So I set up an art account, and I, I also told myself, I was like, you know what? I need to go somewhere that'll hold me accountable. And I think anybody can learn, no matter what level you are. But that was when I did. I searched up local art studios in the area and found yours. And so kind of at the same time, I was starting my kind of art social media but I had no expectation. I didn't have any plans to do anything other than hold myself accountable. And so you had it started when you came to classroom? I started it maybe midway through. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it kind of took off. I started at zero. I think I'm close to 40 something thousand that is incredible. followers. And, and, and how long? In what, six months? Six or seven months. Six or seven yeah, months. So, That's crazy cool. But I, I feel like I'm, a, I'm an okay artist. I think what people are really connect with is the story of, of being a creator and, you know, life well, they, getting in the way. And, yeah. And that, you know what? You can, it's not too late and you can come back. And I think your studio is great for people like me. Um, we have so many that are kind of in that same boat where it's, that come to the studio just because it's the, you know, like you said, help you know, hold yourself accountable. Yeah. And then find a, a way to um, to get to get to class and um, you know try to learn something. I think the big key is you can't ever feel like you've ever arrived. Right. Because there's always something that you can learn. Yeah. So, Look at yours. Yours is like amazing. Isn't that fun? This is really fun. That. I'm having so much fun. I think that is that it's like you could like put the eyeballs in and you could like <laughs> you could almost say that you're there. Oh wow. It's certainly faster than graphite pencil. Right? So that's another reason I like people <laughs> are like, wow, you work really quick. I mean, we've I don't know how much time we're at now, but but I love that about charcoal as well. I feel like you can cover a lot of ground. And it gives you the opportunity to try a lot of different, yeah, a lot of different things. So we're just basically just getting all the lights. So we're pulling out the lights okay. where we can. Yep. And get the texture. And, and get the texture, and you can see what I like is see how the darker you can see the contrast. Uh -huh. I love that. I think that's so fun. And then so you'll be able to come in. Little... Yeah, this like up here yeah. these little hairs. This is fun. Right? This is way fun. You're gonna, you know, there's so many people that are like, oh, I hate chocolate, it's so messy. But yeah, it is messy. It is. But well, I mean, there's more on the easel than on my, my Yeah, that's true. You know, but. Um, See? 
I mean, it's not, it's really fun. It's worth a mess, it looks like. Worth a mess. You tell that to your loved ones when you try charcoal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's worth That's the only, that's the big downside. Yeah, I hear that a lot. And I, that's why, in a way, what's fun about this method is you're actually making as big a mess as possible by covering the whole piece of paper first. Yeah. So then now we're pulling it out. Yeah, so big to little or macro to mini. Yeah. Like you just said. And I'm not going to change it, but I'm noticing I, I didn't really quite get his head tilted. But it, it's going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. Like nobody. He knows what he's. No one's going to. You don't have that hanging next to you. That's me. right. And I think that's important for people to know sometimes. It's like, well, you know, they'll notice a little teeny detail that they miss. And it's like nobody else has memorized your reference yeah. photo. And yeah. Sometimes it's fun to take kind of some artistic yeah. liberty anyways. And I think I cocked his head even a little more sideways, but I kind of liked it. It so looks it good. It was okay. Yeah. So, yeah, both of us. Um, this is basically, I like to think of the reference picture as um, your inspiration. Yes. Instead of feeling like, oh, I, I missed a hair. You know, I missed a line. And, and we're not going for, and some people are amazing at this, but the photo we're not going for hyper-realism. I'm not at least. Yeah. I think some people are amazing at that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's you can fall into that trap, uh, yeah. I think, especially starting out as wanting it to look just like the yeah. reference or inspiration. So I like, I like that terminology, inspiration. Yeah. I, I get stuck with some of my students that will say, oh, it doesn't look like, look at that line, it's just a little different. I'm like, well, look at it as your inspiration, you know. N you never hang up a finished piece of art next to your reference picture. No. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Let it be yours. In fact, yeah, even better, if the more yeah. liberty you can take. And sometimes we have to force it. That's why I like this exercise, which is you're, you're just, we didn't do a graph, yeah. right? We didn't. We, we didn't, didn't do the grid. Or we didn't anything. do a grid, and we're just... We didn't do, even we didn't do a plumb line. We, we just didn't do, we're just going. Yeah. And it's, the, the comfort is for me is with this charcoal. So let's just say, you know, for example, I, I bring his head out here, you know, uh -huh. too much. And I look at it, I'm like, well, that's way off. Like, okay. Just rub it out. I'm, and you're not, I'm good. Yeah. And no then problem. nobody knows, and we'll we'll go back. And then actually, I'm going to make that in really the end. Dark. I would make that really dark, anyways. So that, in a weird way, I draw better knowing that I can erase. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Now, what what about um, what do you think about standing up? I I personally love to stand up because you can stand back, and sometimes you get your 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 piece is so close to you that you can't see until you step back and then you can like see really look at it yeah yeah I, I don't mind standing up i think for this part of it i find when i'm trying to do like fine detail when you got this part i'm like i need to like sit down yeah. and, get, and get really really close but uh -huh. um and to start with you always yeah stand up. i'll either stand i'm usually Sitting, but um, sitting or standing, but I'm not resting my arm on anything mm -hmm. um, to keep it kind of again. Loose. Well, it's interesting when you when you're standing, you tend to step back a lot more and look mm. at it. When you're sitting, I mean, in the studio, I have um, chairs on wheels so that they can roll back, but it's still more effort than if you were standing to just take a step back and look at it. So I think it's the stepping back and standing while we draw is fun so what do you find like obviously you've got people from all walks of life that come i do come to your studio what do people tell you is their biggest concern or fear when they want to kind of get back into art you know it's the confidence i can tell you hands down their lack of confidence in in, in their to ability to, yeah. to draw yeah. or yeah just just feeling you know uneasy and they feel like they don't have the confidence to do it. And watching them gain that confidence is so powerful. It's just so cool to see. Yeah, so what do you either tell them or what do you feel like you do that helps? 
them well, build their confidence. Well, in the classes that we, we offer, they're two and a half hours, so they're not like a quick class. Um, we have enough time to spend um, on, you know, a warm up and talking about things. But one of the big things is this curriculum that I've written for the classes. We don't just talk about, if you're in an oil and chemistry, how to paint, mm. but we also talk about the artists themselves because I think it's important for them to, what do you do when you hit a block? Or what do you do when you, you, um, it just have you just have these doubt triggers and you just can't yeah. go anywhere or um, how do you get out of that oh I'm too timid to show what I've done you know kind of thing so we kind of talk about try to focus on the artist as much as the art so I, I like think that's that. one thing that sets us aside the, away from everyone else is just the way we go about it do you notice anything like based on age groups or anything of people that are more maybe nervous to share or does it really just depend on the it's usually the person. the adults <laughs> that are more nervous to share um, we, the teens are um yeah they are a little bit nervous but not as much as the adults the adults kind of i feel like a lot of people have this idea that well since i'm an adult I should know how to do this, right. you know, but it doesn't matter how old you are. If you've never been taught how to do it, you, you got to learn the steps, you know? Right. So. Well, even like this, I mean, you're, you, you don't really work with charcoal. Yeah. You're a, you know, you're an instructor. Well, I might be working with charcoal more. I will. Know, clearly. I, this I, is so fun. I don't know if I believe you that you haven't been working with charcoal, but. I did a charcoal portrait once when I was in school, that's about it. So this is fun. But don't you think in a weird way too, like even for people who've been doing it a while, I know for me, like I'm, I try to remind people um, who ask me like what advice and I'm like, I haven't been myself drawing a whole lot. There's a lot of mediums I know nothing about. I don't know how to do, mm -hmm. but I even find myself being reluctant to want to, you know, try other things because people are like, oh, well, you're so good at, you know, charcoal or whatever. And, and I'm like, well, I've done this and it's happened to work for me, but I don't know, there's just this pressure. So you're gonna be good at all of yeah. it. And, and, and at every medium. Put yourself out there and be vulnerable and, you know, and sometimes you fail and it's okay, yeah. you know? But yeah, that vulnerability is a big thing, I think, for everyone, especially when they first start or get back into drawing the painting. It's interesting, my teens, my teen class, Yeah. there's so many of them. I mean, there's so much garbage out there right now, you know, right. in the world. Like, there's so many of them that have different struggles that they're struggling with. And this is just like, this is their safe kind place. Kind of safe place. Yeah, and they, this is where they, they're, they're with their homies, you know. They, they love being here, and it's kind of fun to see, you know, see them. Well, it's fun to have people that are... Um, you know, you can kind of nerd out on yeah. the equipment you're using or oh, yeah. shooting or... No one appreciates as much as another artist, you know, and you go, look at my this pencil, you know, they're like, oh, that's yeah, great. You know? <laughs> trying to tell my wife about that when I found this charcoal that comes in extra dark and... She just patched on it. And, and she's said, like, you know, that sound that I could tell, I was like, okay, <laughs> this, you know, and I, I, I don't blame her for that, but well, yeah. it's fun to, when you find other people that are... Yeah, and to share it with other people. Oh, you gotta try this. Yeah. That is really fun. So, what's your favorite thing? I mean, I know you do a lot of wildlife, but you, you kind of fell into that, right? Yeah, so I'm not, it's funny, I'm not, definitely not by, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think of myself as a wildlife artist. Um, so I do, but I do, I really have enjoyed it because there's different textures. You do learn a little bit about the animals um, that you draw, uh -huh. but I, I love, um, I actually like cartoony probably okay. the most. Um, really? Well, just cause I, I feel like it's just truly, when I do that, it's just truly organic. I'm not usually looking at a reference image and um, kind of just having fun creating um, so that's probably what I did the most of. So did you take classes in that? Did you go to school? And oh, no. Uh, no. And in fact, I would say my skill level, for whatever reason, in that cartooning is 
probably worse than in charcoal, but as far as what I enjoy, I enjoy doing, doing um, there's just something about creating something from your head that no one else has done or mm -hmm. that, that I really enjoy. So, so no, it's been good. What about you? Do you try to, you're obviously teaching, you're running the studio. Mm -hmm. You clearly still are, or are actively working on your craft here, but is there anything that I try to take you... at least two or three um, week long workshops every year because I oh wow I, I can learn you can learn so much. So you're going I'm to always, somewhere else. Yeah, I always go somewhere and take a workshop. Okay, and, and uh, um, lose myself in somebody else's method, another you know artist that I admire, and, and then try to see. And it's interesting because when I'm in a workshop like that, I. I feel like, you know how everybody takes all these notes, and I have like two sheets. One is like the process they're teaching, and the other is like, okay, the way they taught it, and how, how can I incorporate what they, the way they teach? Is yeah. that something I want to use, you know? Um, or is it something oh, I Oh, so don't even how to, teach, yeah, how, to how, teach. how to teach the material, yeah. which so, that's a really interesting take, because I think, like to your point, a lot of people are there probably how to do the actual drawing. Yeah, and I'm kind of doing, dual to be here yeah. trying to figure out if and if it's the way I don't like that you know the way they teach if I end up in a workshop that might I, that was confusing that. Then, yeah, I'll make a note of how they did it and then if I have an idea of what I could change yeah I'll make a note of that so I'm trying every you know everywhere I can to learn something new I think it's important that you're always learning you, you've never arrived <laughs> if you feel like you've arrived then I think you Missing, some missing something, yeah, I totally agree. Well, I'm wondering from for, from a time perspective, what might be fun is let's um. So I'm gonna grab my Tombow eraser with okay. a little, and yeah. I just kind of wanna show us some of the hit some highlights, okay. and then what we'll do is we'll come back through a few areas with um the the brushes for the darker perfect spots. Let's do that. That would be fun, and then maybe what we can do is. Uh, when we get these finished, we could post them as well. Yeah. So we could see the finished ones. But Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds good. Yours is looking so good. Oh, thanks. This is really fun. It's hard to like stop though when you're in like a groove. To yeah. I was shift. really nervous about this. I'm like, I don't know if I can. And look, yeah, that. that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow him. But... I guess that's how everybody feels when they learn. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, you just tend to have. Well, and I mean, you haven't done this before, but you, you know, I try to remind myself, I'm like, all I'm really doing is matching light areas and dark areas. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, we just. And, you know. It's going and looking at the. That's right. On the values. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, show me what you what so let's you're grab, lifting out. Yeah, so we're getting. It's like I want some. I don't know if it's very loose. Some it is hard to start here. this. Oh, I got that side. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna. I'm gonna get again. This is a pretty, I'd say, pretty popular eraser in the okay. art community. I don't know if you have the actual Tombow. I've got an extra. That little eraser will work little. just fine. In fact, I did. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So Tombow Mono Zero is just a different size. I like this. This is almost, I think of this as a pencil, um, but a white pencil. That's okay. in my brain how I'm thinking of it. So I'm just going to look, maybe, I don't know, we can decide who to do the eye. Do we try the reflection in the eye? Maybe not yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on the right side of his, his nose, just the sharper lines okay. of whites. So this is where it gets messy because you see how I shouldn't be touching the paper, but I don't. So know. you're trying to. So this is basically I'm making it really white. Okay. In a few spots that are finer details. What I've learned, and also this is true for hair, I don't want. I personally do not want to draw every single hair. I like. Amen. That's not me. Some <laughs> yeah. people do that and they do amazing. Yeah. What I found is if you can mix in a few um, light, really light, thin spots, right, on the hair, it will give the impression. I see. So you just 
So alluding to the fact. You're, you're, yeah, and, and because of the shade, again, why I love charcoal is it's gonna look. And it's a thinner line. Than it's a thinner line. So it might look, and you've actually done a good job already on your eraser because you probably had it pretty thin that, that you've done that. So that's one area I'll use it. The next here, if you look at these lines, and again, you've actually done a good job with your kneaded eraser. Yes, those look like really crisp. Those, those look lines like really right, into... right underneath his eye. Okay. So I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna come back through with the dark to really make that line pop. But like, it looks like your needed eraser actually did a really good job of you were able to keep it pretty thin. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, you definitely have a, a light side and a shadow side, but it's very minimal. You don't see it really easily. And as I'm looking at this, do you look at yours and you look at it and you go, oh, I got that jaw too wide. I'm too oh, wide totally. right here. So I just know I'm just going to push it in. Yep, you're going to. So, okay. so you can push it back in, pull it back out. That's why I try to be patient, put patient with myself. Like, I, it, it almost keeps you drawing because you're like, you know you want to fix it, mm -hmm. but you can with turtle. Yeah. Like, you could erase that entire nose if you really wanted to. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. What about the dark, little tiny dark shapes? Are you using just like a... So here's what we'll, what I'll do. So this this will be a good example on the eyes. I'm going to just do a couple of these real quick to get that. Again, the eye area is just going to be... I'm going to make it or kind of break it. Interesting texture on that too. Around the eye. Kind of leathery looking, isn't it? Yeah. And if you could do some really fun if you wanted where you could actually use different like a different sponge or a different mm -hmm. some. Well that's the fun of it. You can just play with whatever. You can grab another makeup brush or Well that's how that's just how <laughs> I learned though is I'm like what do I have so around nice. the house? <laughs> yeah, she's like, those are mine. I'm like, well we're going to the mall. <laughs> I need I need my tools. So again, we could we're we're kind of doing an accelerated version, but yeah. I'm gonna now get these blacks, and I don't know where the camera is if you can see over here, but this is where it gets really fun for me is you can start to bring in Okay, so you're using the brush to put the darks in. Get that contrast. In. Yep. Okay. And then I can also, because I, I know I feel like these lines are too thick, so I can thin out Push in a little bit. that line. But you know, you, you kind of see the journey now that I'm committing to, which is yeah. I'm going to need to bring all of this in dark. To that dark. To that dark. Now, I'm using the brush for the finer details. I, I can or will get my sponge. To do some of the bigger spots here. Okay, to fill in this. But you know, you want to look like if I look at yours right there, I feel like yours looks pretty dark. Maybe it's just the lighting, but um, it's almost a different color. Yeah, it is. But I kind of like it. Very good yeah. eyes he's got. Yeah. I okay. Of, I kind of like that. But now what I'm doing is I'm kind of introducing yet another layer, right? Another contrast. Yeah, so tell me what, you started with a, a, a willow charcoal. I started with a willow charcoal that um, tends to be lighter okay. than this one. This is a compressed charcoal. I just got it at Hobby Lobby. Okay, um, and that's just a little darker, isn't it? And it is. It's, for some reason, this compressed charcoal powder, it's different than the willow. Makes me wonder if it's got carbon in it. It could have carbon in it. Interesting. Um, but it gives you that deep value. It gives me a deeper value, so. So, so when do you, because you said sometimes that you do layers. Yeah. You do a variety of layers. So when do you feel like you have to go, okay, i got to stop and put some fixative on it? 
So I'm going to do that. Now, if, if you can get the charcoal dark enough, the only reason you want to do that is you feel like, um, yeah, it's hard. Now, I try to avoid if you don't have the to. layers if you don't okay. have to. So with, it's basically to layer it. It's to layer it and, and make it darker. That would be the main reason. So with paper, so if, if, if you look at my art that I post, I do a lot of canvas. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting applying charcoal to canvas it tends to be a little harder to make the canvas darker compared to this paper. Okay. So I tend to do more building up of layers okay. With, okay. with that. Do you um, like paper or canvas? Paper? I like paper for the detail. Uh -huh. Like we can get like this with these little brushes and I feel like it shows up well. But when I do commissions for people, um, it just feels... It just feels cool that you're giving them something That's sturdy. Substance. It's not going to rip easy, and they can right when they get it, they can hang it up. So I like both. It also adds a different texture. Mm -hmm. The canvas does. So I don't know. I like both. Wow. I'm doing small, fine details, though. I definitely prefer. So when you're all done with this, do you spray a fixative on it? Yes. You one have to. just one layer, or do you spray? I will test it. I'll spray a layer, let it dry. I'll rub my hand on it really softly and just see. Okay. Um, but I use a Krylon, just the Krylon. It's a pretty popular Workable brand. Fix it Workable fix it okay. in. It doesn't, I found for me the matte finish with Krylon dampens the darks. Okay. And so you gotta be careful, even though it says that it's a finish, it might actually impact your charcoal. So the matte finish instead of the workable fixative? Do not use matte finish. Oh, don't use matte so, finish. Okay. So I'm just saying sometimes they're, they're selling you something. something that works maybe for a paint, even though it says it can work with charcoal. So for me, the, the workable fixative Krylon. And if you touch it and you need to put a second coat, you'll put a second coat. You can coat. totally put a second coat or you can be done. Okay. Yep. All right. Cool. So I don't know, what do we think? Do we, do we try the eyes and then Oh, good. Or? Yeah, show me how you go about the eyes. Woo. And then we'll we'll work on them on our own and, and compare. How's that sound? Yeah, I like it. What do you think, Leland? You've been watching. How are you feeling? It's great. That's fun being a fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. And this is where I would probably try to measure. A little bit to see how far off, like just to make sure you got. This yeah, you just right. don't want to mess up the eyes. Yeah, but we're in a no, we're in a no pressure zone here, you know. Yeah. We're just, we're just gonna go for it. So now you're going for a different, bigger eraser. A little bit thicker eraser. And are you erasing the entire? Are you looking at it as shape still? Right? I'm just looking at the shape. You're erasing the light I'm shape, seeing... out, which happens to be the the iris. On this picture, I'm seeing kind of two distinct shades, almost three. I want to leave that dark pupil. Nice. On this now one. it looks like someone's home or halfway home. Halfway. <laughs> and again, you can get carried away pretty quick here. This is where my hand gets all dirty because I'm. I need. I need to. For me, be very stable. I actually have very shaky hands, believe it or not. And so I'm stabilizing, but I am also smudging. And so, and that's fine. So I can go back. Go back. So is this about the point that you usually go sit down? I would sit down. Okay. You can say this is sit not. Sit down and just kind of. Take not the your time most and... comfortable. Yeah. So, you can kind of see, like there's, cool. it's 50-50 yeah, it's that, 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 that I might be a little bit too far, but before I commit to that, You're gonna do some I, I want to, well, then you can come in here and then really bring Actually, this is where you could use a 
electric eraser if you have one, because it's what it's gonna do is actually go into the paper. So I do try to be careful. I don't want to dig into the paper too much. So that's where you're using um, getting the most bright, bright. But that'll get kind of the glossy look. Yep. Kind of, um, oh yeah, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? For sure. So your eye is drawn to wherever there's the most contrast, and you got that dark got the black dark. around it, and then you got the brilliant white highlights. So that yep. see that? That's so cool. So I have this. Is so fun. Right. So then you can see here. This eye actually is is. Uh, I still haven't brought in the darks mm -hmm. as yeah, dark as it could go, but you know, he start he, he starts to mm -hmm. he starts to come He's alive. He's got some depth now, yeah, yeah. You know, he he probably so you can see how I erased um, underneath his eye. Mm -hmm. That that'll be a really important piece. Is yeah, get that bringing that in. And if I go too big again, I can just come back in. That was so cool. Come back in later, so. It's very fun. This is where you're committed now. Yeah. That electric racer looks like it's key. It's a, it's helpful for sure. Yeah. For sure. Oh, cool. So. Yeah, this is awesome. so I'll go and we refine it. We're, we're moving pretty quick, but it's a fun, this is the kind of where it all kind of comes to life. The other thing you mentioned about the focal point that I think we can be a little bit more forgiving as artists sometimes to ourselves is, you know, you could be, you could be done. Mm -hmm. Like you put a couple eyes in here and you, you put a little bit more detail and that's it. That's where the focal point is. Yeah. And you that can be a really to, cool. You don't have to finish you know, off uh, like Look at, you know, up here. And yeah. Um, I, I think too often we're so focused again, going back to the reference image, you want it to look yeah. like the reference image. That's but like, so true. go look at art. Like, there's a lot of really cool art. It just kind of fades away. It just kind of fades away. Focal point. Yeah. 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 So, so you can see I made a. That's a good, that's a good point. In fact, so. with that rubber glove, I have to mess with that. That's not ideal. Anyways, so yeah, it's, it's fun. So now I'm like, I just got, I got, I got to keep working on this thing. Yeah, it's hard to stop. Addicting. This is so fun. This is way fun. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. So you sit down and spend, how long would you spend finishing this up? Well, it depends. If it's a commission for somebody, gonna I'm going to spend a lot. I'll probably spend, you know, a, a good amount of time with it. If this is just me just play for it. fun, if I'm just playing. So I've been doing a kind of a one session, one sit down, kind of like this. And I'll just try to strategically think about how much do I actually need to get done. Um, and I might do that in three hours or so. So you try to do a finished piece once a week? Is that I try cool? to finish one piece a week. That's cool. If I can. That's yep. cool. Um, but it's not always in one sitting. Not always in one sitting, but okay. then I do try to do one piece in one sitting a week as well. Okay. If I can. So maybe two. Well, look, I think we've spent a little under two hours. Um, ton of fun. Let's go we'll work on these. Maybe we'll share them back okay. out, but I really appreciate it. This you inviting me here. And well, thanks for coming. Yeah. I appreciate you teaching me your method. I think that's awesome because I would not have, you know, I wouldn't have known about your makeup brush. Yeah. You <laughs> learned something there. Yeah. But I wouldn't have known about your process. And it's just yeah. fun to, what you've done for me is you've simplified the idea of, you know, you look at your piece and you're like, how on earth could you have done that? But when you simplify that process, you know, starting with the shapes and just getting, getting it big and, yeah. you know, dirty and get going and then. And then refining it. That's really yeah. Cool. And I just so, say with what you mentioned earlier, anybody, anybody can draw. Uh huh. It's okay to make mistakes and to work through it, but it's important. I think that um, you know people put themselves out there. That you try. And that you just try. Well, and you don't have to post it to social media. Sometimes people are like, oh, I just I want to try. I want to post it to social media. And I love what you've got here at the studios. People are just coming in. They're creating. Not yeah. necessarily an intent to, you know, yeah. share it out, but do something for you and, and it enriches your life. And I think that's awesome. And, and one thing to keep in mind, I think that's important, and I remind my students about this all the time, is it's just a piece of paper or it's just yeah. a canvas. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. If it doesn't turn out, 
don't think about, I mean, everything doesn't have to be wall worthy. Yeah. You know, just, you know, I like that. learn from it and your next piece will be even better. So, so go ahead and follow Johnny on Instagram. It's Johnny Clark. Johnny Clark Art. Art. Well, Johnny Clark Art, that's right. And, and uh, you'll have a fun time following him. He's got some really fun posts and stories, and it's really yeah. fun to see what you've done. Great. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, I feel like, um, as well, for my followers who are watching this, you can see what Susie does, build confidence um, with artists, and I think it's awesome, all the lessons and tips that you have. So I know I've got a lot of creators that, that follow me and would get a lot of value from your page as well. Well, thank you. Mine is Susie BTW. So, well, great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Thanks again. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's been I appreciate good. that.